class, uh, in the last class, we have also seen the disadvantages of using the HDB table artifact. The first disadvantage is if you have to create n number of tables, you would end up creating n number of files. The second disadvantage is there is no way you redefine the relationship between these different tables. The third disadvantage is there is no reuse of types. For example, in ABAP programming, we have reuse of data elements inside our DB table. We have reuse of our structures inside a database table like append and include structure, which makes it easy for me for future enhancements. For example, if I take a currency data type, I create a data element and tomorrow my currency data type length have changed. I just have to go and make the change in the data element and the domain and wherever this is been referred it gets adopted automatically so we slowly want to get into the mode of data dictionary concept in sap the way we have it in sap abap okay and that's why sap hana has introduced concept of sap hana core data services to be able to have one concept in multiple flavors which covers both abap and sap hana this concept is known as core data services and to be able to work with core data services SAP introduced a new artifact called HDBDD. Here the DD stands for data dictionary. You can see clearly DD stands for data dictionary so they want to bring in a concept of data dictionary inside of SAP HANA. In ABAP we already have concept of data dictionary which is SE11. This concept is what we've been using for ABAP development in the past and in today in fact also but it's a graphical editor it's a graphical base tool to be able to manage the database objects okay so graphical base tool which is able to manage all the database objects inside of an SAP ABAP environment okay so hdbdd stands for data dictionary a new artifact was introduced is starting sap hana 1.0 sp6 onwards the cds view the cds concept of sap hana as well as new artifact data dictionary was introduced just like in abap you have se 11 transaction which is the central repository for all your database objects where you can create structures you can create reusable types, you can create domain, you can create data elements, you can create database tables, reuse the data, data, data elements inside database table, you can create structures and you can reuse those structures as part of your database table using include structure or append structure commands. Isn't it? That's what complete data dictionary does for you in ABAP environment. The similar concept was introduced in SAP HANA from SP6 onwards called SAP HANA Data Dictionary Artifact, which is nothing but SAP HANA CDS. Is that clear to everybody? What is HANA CDS? It's nothing but a new artifact called HDBDD, which allows you to manage your database objects just the way you manage them in SE11. Clear everyone? What is HANA CDS? Now, if you talk in an interview, from the perspective of an interview, what will you answer in interview? What is HANA CDS? HANA CDS is an extension of SQL. So basically, the necessary SQL statements are generated behind the scenes. You just have to create a CDS object and you don't need to worry about underlying SQL statements. The, the, the database is so smart that when you create a CDS artifact, it understand it so well and it generate the necessary SQL statements behind the scenes for you. Just to take an example, let's imagine Anubhav created a table called Anubhav. I created a table today. When I activate this table, let's say I have three columns in the table. Now, when you activate this table, when you activate this HDBDD artifact, system would have already created a table with three columns. Now tomorrow, let's say you go ahead and change something in the table. You change this table by means of changing the data type or by means of adding new fields to this existing table. This is what you have done maybe. 
Now, do you think that you need to go and write alter table statement yourself? Do you think you need to write alter table statement yourself? And do you need to take care of your data migration in case of a data loss yourself? Of course not. That's what all being taken care by SAP HANA. SAP HANA CDS concept allows you to insert, update, delete new columns. Basically, the modifying of the structure is completely possible. And when you activate this, system generates the necessary alter table statement for you. You, you. The entire complexity is hidden behind the scenes. The necessary alter statement is also generated behind the scenes. You don't need, really need to care about it. And also the data which is there in your productive system will be safeguarded. System ad adjusts the table structure in a way that it doesn't hamper your data. You don't have to take care of your data safeguarding yourself that's been taken care by sap hana cds it's an extension of sql that's the answer in interview now what are all the things which cds offers offers us cds as i mentioned offers a new type of artifact in hana repository named as HDBDD, HANA Database Dictionary, Data Dictionary in HANA. Clear everyone? New type of artifact called HANA Data Dictionary. That's what SAP HANA offers with HANA CDS. Okay. Now, also if you further want to answer this in detail in interview, what would you be telling? So maybe just, yeah. So what is CDS exactly? It's an extension of SQL. The necessary SQL statements are generated behind the scenes. It is one single language to create structures. Structures, I mean, called type in SAP HANA. Okay. A structure is actually a type in SAP HANA. User defined complex types and simple types, tables, views, and reuse one another inside. So you can reuse them inside one each other okay that's what you can really do it you can reuse things you can define association define relationship between these things between the objects using concept called association that's a concept of cds which you can do it at ndd level Another advantage, you can define the, the business logic sometimes using expressions. You can define business logic using CDS expression, which means you can create, you can read, and you can define expressions. So CDS is available mainly in three parts, DDL data definition language, data query language, and data expression language. This is what we call CDS, one concept in two flavor. Those who attended my ABAPAN HANA training, you already know that we have also CDS where we have written some case expressions, coalesce expression, different types of expressions inside of CDS to be able to manipulate the data at the database level, right? So DDL allows you to define the relationships as well using association and necessary join statement is generated behind the scenes. Join statement are generated behind the scenes, right? You don't need to learn SQL for that. And tomorrow, if you modify your join, the data is adjusted accordingly, your join gets modified automatically. You don't really need to worry about it. Let's take a typical example. Today, let's imagine you are coding join yourself. You are saying select, I'm just using start at the moment, from table one, inner join, table two, on my join condition. This is what you have used today in your application. And now, as a result of it, you are making sure that these two tables having a join evaluated at runtime. Now what will happen tomorrow, you might have used this statement at multiple places in your application program, okay? 
it's not like only one place you would use you will write it multiple places like 500 different places you have used okay now what will happen tomorrow if this join changes how many places you got to go back and change the join anybody how many places you got to go back and change this join if the join if the condition changes how many places you got to go back and change your code in the application anyone how many places you got to go back and change this join condition in your application coding of course n number of places but if you use cds cds does an abstraction of this join by means of association so what you do with cds you're going to define this relationship inside of something called cds maybe you're creating a view by evaluating the join and then you have defined an association when the when you run the cds the necessary sql statement is generated automatically okay so at runtime cds would uh, the system would then generate the necessary sql statement okay it's generated at runtime and based on this association which you define now in all your application coding your application program is just going to talk to cds this is your application code you're going to talk to only cds guys now tomorrow if a join changes how many places you got to change it anyone how many places you got to go and change your relationship between these tables when it comes to cds how many places you got to go and change this relation you got to go and change the relation only in association in cds and the necessary sql statement is anyways generated at runtime based on this association so that way you safeguard yourself you can scale much faster in a better way that's why we don't directly code sql we use cds and that's why in abap also there were two purpose of cds one to safeguard and make sure the code is generated at runtime you don't have to code select statements anymore select into internal table not required second advantage code to data paradigm where the code is now evaluated it gets executed inside of sap hana database and that's why sap core data service in abap was introduced similarly in hana we saw that if you want to do anything we got to use sql to get rid of sql to create an abstraction over the sql and make our design so flexible for future so that we don't have to make so many changes in future we go ahead with cds approach is that clear everyone why cds what is so important why we people use cds you are clear with the purpose then you will love learning concepts if you are not clear with the purpose you will see the concept as an overhead on you you will feel like why are we doing why not, why can't you just simply write a select query and finish it off anubhav why are you doing this this is the purpose okay this is the purpose there's a question from shaker if i don't have hana db in backend abap cds will work yes abap cds will work because it's a concept at abap layer level what abap does abap generates the necessary sql statements and it sends it to the database so even you don't run on sap hana db the abap cds still works starting netweaver 7.4 sp6 onwards guys in abap okay sp6 in 7.4 sp6 was cds introduced in sap netweaver so you got to be only minimum on 7.4 sp6 okay abap cds concept is introduced doesn't matter which database do you use abap manages it so well for you okay that's the cds concept so now we will get in into system and try and create our database tables inside the system using cds concept we will not use the sql statements or hdb table to do it so we saw the advantage of cds now let's also talk about some advanced things about cds so cds is all about ddl dql and del data expression language okay there is a point shaker is making we get full advantage with hana db right you're right because since we if you do a bap on hana you all know that hana has more powers so if you talk about your abap context you have three layers the maximum power is now shifted 
to SAP HANA layer, the database level is the maximum power because it can do massive parallel processing. It can do a lot of uh, fast processing because all the data is kept in RAM. It's kept in close. You have node concept, you have compression done, you have column store, you have insert only approach. These are software advancements. Because of that, the data gets processed much, much faster. And only final result is what you transfer over the network to the application layer. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that, Karun. One second. Let me just enable. Yeah, now it's open. So let's also talk about more benefits of CDS. So guys, I'm explaining you the purpose. Many times we get confused why and about CDS. This question comes so often, even when I started, Looking at the CDS concept, I was unsure what is the purpose. But over a period of time, I realized there's a great value. This is the value what CDS gives us. So why shouldn't we use it? My first question was why? And now my question is why not? Okay. Initially, my question was why? And now after understanding this concept in detail, I say why not? Okay. Why not? So don't follow industry. Of course, you got to follow industry because industry, everybody says use CDS. But you need to understand the behind the scenes. What are the benefits? Let's talk about more benefits of CDS. Okay. We can reuse the CDS one another. This is one benefit. So if you create one CDS, the CDS itself is reusable. What does it mean in layman terms? One HDBDD file can use artifacts of another HDD HDBDD files clear everyone one HDBDD file can use artifacts of another HDBDD file this is a very great feature I will show you this feature now remember this feature these features which I'm discussing the more benefits they were introduced with SAP HANA S 1.0 SP9 guys this is where these features were introduced. Make sure at least your company is running SAP HANA starting SP10 or SP12 because then you will really get leverage the power of CDS. CDS itself was introduced in SP6. In SP9, SAP enabled you reuse of CDS in one another file. Okay. This is what CDS can do. Second advantage, we can define the user defined data type now syntax for be to be able to reuse a cds is using namespace namespace is the path actually the path where the cds exist which is nothing but created using package path if you saw if you remember when we create a table in a package system puts the package name as a prefix which means if icp deliver a table called vbac i can also create a table vbac in the system in hana db when I'm talking in context of native HANA development, so I can also develop a VBAC table in my local package, in my package of application, and then I can, the both VBAC table can live together because package becomes the namespace for your artifacts. We saw that in the past class, the package name was put behind the, behind the name of the table, and then your CDS name. This is the syntax to reuse a CDS in another CDS. The second advantage, we can define user define type could be simple types or complex types. Now this is equivalent to a simple type is equivalent to a data element in a BAP or I would say domain to be very precise because it's a technical properties of a field. It is equivalent to a domain and complex types are equivalent to what? Anybody who will tell me? Complex types are equivalent to what in ABAP? Who will tell me any ABAPer in the room? Guys, you say you are a ABAP champion. Tell me the answer. What is a complex type? No, not class. Complex data type in ABAP. What is it? In data dictionary, what is a complex data type? Is of type. Is structure. Perfect answer, Karun. This is what is equivalent to a complex data type in ABAP. So this is what we can do. We can define a scalar types like domains we can also define a complex type like structure in cds moving next we can also define 
complex data types as I mentioned what will be the syntax to define now these simple and complex types the simple type is type user defined type whatever user defined type you want to use colon your primitive data type for example SAP HANA offers a string data type and I can now also put the length here just an example here you can put integer or you can also put HANA dot HANA data types code completion as usual is available we will be discussing that in detail in, 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 in a minute okay is that clear everybody how to define a simple type what about complex type like structures so you can put type and for example I want to create a structure so it's just a structure type and put curly braces and then inside this you can put your um, you know fields so you can say field one colon your data type semicolon field two colon data type and you can keep specifying here data types you can also use along with this data type user defined data type so you see just now I have defined a user defined data type so this is the use of user defined data type I just define this the power is let's say you create a date data type okay and tomorrow you want to change it to a timestamp if you use user defined data type you just have to change it one place and everywhere wherever this date is being used it gets converted to timestamp yeah that's the beauty of user defined data type it's all about reuse guys just the way you reuse domains and structures in ABAP similarly you use these type data types in your SAP HANA CDS syntax okay so from SP9 onwards, you can also start using primitive data types of SAP HANA. So from SP9 onwards, we can also use primitive data types inside of SAP HANA. Inside of CDS of HANA. So you can start with HANA dot and control space. You will get the list of all the HANA data types. Okay. List of all the HANA data types you will get. This is an easy way to define a data type. Clear everyone? Now moving next. Let's also talk about another advantage. There is a concept called annotations in CDS. Annotation concept. We already saw in a map on HANA course. That it influences sometimes the creation of user interface. It influences the purpose, the way you use CDS as a query language inside analytical tools. So similarly, you can also define user-defined annotations. We will come about annotation chapter a little later. We will discuss about some certain annotations, which will be very helpful. As you all know, HANA also provides text search capabilities, uh, wherein you can do a a text search or an enterprise search which is fault tolerant okay and we can also use certain sub some annotations to be able to enable text search for certain fields for example description of a product it should be fault tolerant I want to enable that search for description of the product so all these things are completely possible with SAP HANA CDS concept we will see some flavor of it today in today's class clear now, couple of funda foxes, as you all know, in major all my trainings, which you can see on on internet, uh, which I'm hosting, I always give funda fox my own word, where I will talk about something very important to note. CDS syntax is a very special syntax. It's somehow, you know, similar to JSON. Okay, so we have meaning of every symbol has a meaning. So. Don't just play around with symbol, curly braces, brackets, parentheses, they all have the meaning. So don't just put anything, whatever you like, okay? You need to be careful. There is a naming convention which we typically follow. We should follow the camel case naming convention. The first letter is small. And next consecutive word, first letter is caps so for example if I want to write I love India 
I would say first letter is small i is small love is second word first letter is capital India I is capital I love India that's what exactly I'm writing clear everyone how do you write this next what we next do is we also need to make sure that every line in CDS ends with a semicolon okay every line in CDS ends with semicolon so these are all couple of important things you need to remember when it comes to CDS programming in SAP HANA clear everybody what is the purpose of CDS why CDS what is that which we can do new with HANA SP9 with CDS and the beauty is you also got rid of many of the things like in yesterday's class I showed you creating best in pizza table and we were writing here these uh, you know different different things here multiple places now many of these things can be controlled by annotations so you see type of the table column store schema name all these things are controlled by CDS annotations in CDS syntax so let's go ahead and create our order table now order status table once more using SAP HANA CDS concept guys watch out now I want to create same table order table once again in the same package with the CDS concept the first thing which I now want to show you is how do you delete a table okay how do you delete a table because the moment you delete this file it will disappear from here but it won't disappear it won't go away from your schema so if this is your schema if you come down and see the tables the table won't disappear from from this place if you just delete it from the project because it's deleted only from local system so let me delete this I right click and say delete or maybe I just create another HDB table and show you deletion how deletion can be achieved I will keep this one intact guys I don't touch this or maybe I can delete this also no problem because we have seen already the syntax in the last class so let me delete this the code is already updated into the block so you can download the code and check that up in case of need but we don't use HDB table anymore guys there are there are not really great advantages of using HDB table nobody use it because you got to create then n number of files to create table don't go with HDB table approach go with CDS CDS is the new way of defining your HDB tables your table types reuse them define the relationship between them and necessary SQL statements are generated behind the scenes you get power of association you get power of uh, you know lot of HANA native features not native capabilities and then all that is completely integrated and when you activate SAP system automatically compares the version inside the repository inside of your schema about the objects and it checks what what you are activating and what's the difference and it adjusts the necessary structures by keeping making sure that your data is is safeguarded okay all these benefits you're getting for free and the next major benefit of repository object is tra transport so if you're creating the, 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 the tables using SQL statement the disadvantage is th that you need to run the SQL commands in all the systems your quality your production but if you do it with repository objects we don't need to worry about it because we transport the package once the package gets into, into quality system using delivery unit concept it gets activated and the necessary SQL statements are generated and then the tables and uh, and the other artifacts are generated or modified accordingly so system compares if the table which has come up now is is uh, really having now um, a new column or the change in data type then it generates the necessary alter table statement rather than again recreating the whole object it gives you a complete uh, feature of data dictionary for you actually D that's what data dictionary in above does that's what HANA CDS does for you now let me delete this so I right click and delete this table and the another great advantage of using CDS guys the order of activation is all on CDS order of activation of objects is managed by CDS let me take an example many times it so happened that you created a structure now this is structure you are reusing inside a database table okay now what do you think what should be activated first should you activate table first or should you activate a structure first anybody any ABAP in the room in ABAP you might have done this kind of thing in the past 
what is should be activated first should you activate table or should you activate a structure shaker is saying structure why if i activate table what will happen shaker what will happen if i activate table the table is reusing a structure which is not available in the system yet it's not active and if you try and activate the table then system would give you an error it says the structure not found which is referred in the table so idea is to first activate a structure and table now imagine if you create all the tables manually one by one what is that you need to take care you need to take care in the order in which this table need to be activated right that's what is your duty and if you try and activate a table the individual table which is reusing something from another table or another structure without activating the dependent object you are getting into transport errors this is also minimized with the cds because so smart it understands the relations between these objects and it takes care it makes an activation plan behind the scenes and you as a developer application developer don't really need to take care in the order in which the objects should be activated it's all been taken care by cds it checks the dependencies and it activates the objects in the order in which they should be ideally activated clear everybody that's also a great advantage of using cds you see so many advantages why not to use cds why not so earlier you were thinking why cds and now you say why not cds you know the advantages of using cds clear everyone this discussion of cds this has been a confusion since many many days in many of our mind why cds what is hana cds majority of the time when you attend trainings online with trainers they will not teach you this depth of knowledge they will just cover the basics of what they learned from somebody else they don't even talk about hana cds they don't even talk about native hana development they will just teach you sap hana and they will leave you and this is what majority of the trainers i see in they are cheating so don't get ho get hoaxed by those trainers on the name of s4 on the name of abap on hana on the name name of uh, hana cds and native hana development they are teaching wrong things they are just teaching data migration database uh, database migration tools data provisioning sometimes data analytics and little bit of data modeling and that's what according to them is everything but if you see my website onlinefurytrainings.com you would find the detail every single course is well designed every single course has a well defined structure according to which we follow it okay you can see here completely every course is designed separately by completely focusing on that particular course so if you talk about abap on hana and s4 hana technical it's completely a different module if you talk about native hana development it's a different module if you talk about ui5 it's a different module it's completely focused on that particular topic rather than misleading you misguiding you going in a completely different direction on the name of abap on hana i've seen trainers are teaching just hana they don't even come in abap stack they don't even discuss how abap meets sap hana watch out my videos subscribe to my youtube channels you get a very fair idea about what is abap on hana and s4 hana is all about okay great so let's move on and now we go ahead and create our cds first cds we will create with a very simple type first we will delete this table so i click on okay you see the table got deleted but if i just come back and refresh here you would see the table is still exist because it got just deleted from local system from your local repository workspace but what we need to do to make these changes available in remote repository who will tell me by far what we learned what you need to do to make these changes now available in remote repository who will tell me what is that we do to make these changes available in remote repository anybody what will you do to make these changes available in remote repository anyone yes you're right we need to activate we need to just go back and do an activation at project level so right click and now activate at the project level so i say team activate and now you see it checks what's there in local and what's there in remote and the necessary sql statements are generated it checks in remote repository there's a table called order status however in my local system i don't have a local uh, table called order status which means the table was deleted 
by user. Hence, system generates the necessary delete statement to delete the table, to drop the table, basically drop the table from the database completely. And if you come back and refresh your schema, you would see your database table would disappear. You see, the table is gone. That's the beauty of HANA CDS or HANA repository objects. The necessary SQL statements are generated automatically behind the scenes. You get complete lifecycle version management with SAP HANA repository. Is that clear, everybody? The concepts of SAP HANA repository, why we are using it. We've been discussing this since last three sessions, SAP HANA repository. This has been apparent now for all of us. That is a great advantage. Rather than writing SQL directly, you should go ahead and use repository objects to be able to manage your database objects. Okay, so now we just close this and let me just go ahead and create our first CDS. So we'll start creating our first CDS with some reusable types. Now imagine you are doing a development in a productive company uh, for a product, for a POC or a product. Now you've got to define lots of data elements and domains in above. Similarly, we will define lots of domains here inside of SAP HANA using CDS. Let's go ahead and create one. So I say new file. And this time I will go ahead with CDS concept. So let me create a reusable data types. So I say reuse file name and I'm going to create it here inside. Now, unfortunately, at this point, there is no template available. Now, I just right click once again and say new other. And then I will choose HDVDD. Okay. I use CDS or HDVDD. It's called DDL. So you can see SAP HANA DDL source file. This is what we create. Okay, and this is your HDVDD artifact, guys. Let me just choose a name called Reuse. Okay, and you see, system has automatically picked up the extension HDVDD. Anyone, what is DD stands for? Who will tell me? Very good interview question. In HDVDD, what DD stands for? Anybody? What is that DD stands for in HDVDD? Yes, it stands for Data Dictionary. Thank you, Karun. Karun has a question as an ABAPR, also required to introduce for functional part like simple logistic and finance concept. Otherwise, totally depends on functional person. Please, in future, can you start some courses on that? Okay, I'm not a functional guy. I'm a pure technical guy. And that's not my cup of tea going into more functional area, Karun. However, I'll see if I can get you some free videos by understanding the functional concepts and bring it, bring it to you on the table from my YouTube channel. But I don't promise on that area because I don't like functional parts. I love technical things and that's my cup of tea. This is what I'm more interested in grow into this particular area because tech functionally somehow you can depend on somebody. They, they, you can get some knowledge from them. But technically, you see in the system, things which you do in the system are more difficult as compared to functional. I'm not saying functional is useless. It is also plays a very, very important role, but that's not something not I am into at this moment. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. And now I just click on finish. So you'd see HDBDD file got created. Voila. Superb. The first statement, which we are now going to write in this HDBDD file is the path where HDBDD exists. So you see it's in my BIP package. So that's the namespace, the path of the package the first line which tells where exactly it exists. The second line you see, as, as I was telling earlier, we were writing the schema name in a JSON format in HDB table file. Now this has been replaced by uh, annotation. You see annotations are always starts with at the rate of, and hopefully if I do at the rate of control space, I can see the annotations which are available at the view at the CDS level top level. This is an annotation which is available. Similarly, if you come inside and put at the rate of in control space, you see annotations available within within the CDS syntax. Yeah? So code completion helps you a lot to know about this annotation. However, the important annotations we will discuss. So first annotation is scheme annotation, which tells the system that all these DD artifacts should be created in which schema. So we have created already in the past in yesterday's class a BIP schema. So let me put the name of the schema BIP. BIP stands for best in pizza product. Okay. We are developing this POC for a pizza company who is supplying pizzas and different junk food to corporate clients. We have already discussed about the use case in the last class. Hope you all remember that use case. And that's why the naming convention we all follow according to our company name, which is BIP. 
So that's why a BIP schema was created for best in business. Now come down inside the context reuse. So context is all about again um, in one CDS. I mean, you can have multiple contexts. So again, context become part of your namespace in CDS. And this will also be helpful. Like I was mentioning reuse. You want to reuse one CDS in another, which I will also demonstrate you in a minute so that you can go ahead and you know, use this context to be able to refer the CDS objects in another CDS. Okay, and in another CDS, you can again have same name of object. There is no name conflict because of the context feature. Okay, so today here you can define a date data type, and in another CDS also you can define a date data type with same name, but the context of both of them will be different. So both of them can coexist and can be reused in third CDS completely without any problem okay that's the power of context and inside this we will write all our types so let's start with some data types so as you know that we have already created some uh, sample data i've got i uh, spoke to the ceo of this company and this ceo of this company have already given me some sample data which we had looked at it yesterday's class the majority of the db design is based on a guid based approach so that it is flexible all the primary keys are guid based and there was a question in yesterday's class asked to me, Anubha, what is the way in SAP HANA we can generate the GUIDs? It's very simple. In ABAP, we have CL underscore UUID class, UUID factory class. In SAP HANA, we have a concept called a database table, uh, sorry, a database uh, variable, which we can use to be able to drive the GUIDs. So let me show you. Select sys UUID as from dummy table. Okay, this is like psi hyphen, uh, psi hyphen mandate or psi hyphen datum in ABAP. So this is a system uh, system uh, defined variable which always generates a unique GUID for us. Press F8, and you see a unique GUID is generated on your screen. Yeah, of course, when we go to SQL script programming, this will give us a great advantage to create the records technically inside the table which are unique. Clear, everyone? Hope this answer your question, Charu, which you were asking yesterday. How to create? GUIDs in SAP HANA. Clear? This will always give you a unique GUID. Again, if you execute, let me just show you. Right click and copy the cell. Maybe just put it into a, a notepad file. Here, I put it and I again execute this same statement. And again, I've got a GUID. Let me copy this. And you can come back and now compare these GUIDs. You will find a difference. You see here, this number have changed. Yeah, every time you execute, it gives you a unique random GUID of 32 characters. Very, very helpful to introduce the fields inside of DB of type GUID. Okay, that's our DB design is also based on. So let me create our first data type of type GUID. So I say GUID type. Now imagine you're creating domains in a BAP system. And now you can see HANA dot control space. And you see all the HANA data types are available in CDS syntax for me to choose for. And I maybe choose Varkar. And then say GUID is 32 characters. So I just put it. And every line must end with what? Anybody. What is every line in CDS must end with? Who will tell me? Just now I discussed about Wonderfox. What is that every line in CDS must end with? Perfect answer. It ends with a semicolon. Moving next, let's create three different levels of strings. Small strings. So I just put it S string. And I just choose a string type of, let's say, 40 characters. So I want to create a small string of 40 characters. Then I want to say type uh, medium string. So never copy paste the code. Trainers who are teaching copy paste, they are cheating you. Don't go with such trainers. Never go with trainers who are teaching you copy paste. That way they get rid of teaching you right concepts, the right line by line explanation. They just downloading some sample from internet, copy pasting these samples into output, showing you the output and running away. This is how trainings have been given in, in majority of the online trainers. This is what I observed by which they do, which is bad guys. They are, they are just escaping away from their responsibility of teaching right things in the right way. I've seen this in UI5 very often, Fury UI5, very, very often. They copy-paste complete XML view. They show the output 
and then they go away if you just want to learn copy paste control c control v why do you need to waste your money don't waste your money and time behind such trainers who are teaching you copy paste write every single line of code yourself that will what make you expert so that you can know where is the mistake you've done okay moving to the next one a type of large string i'm creating a string of let's say 255 characters so i'm just defining reusable data types guys okay reusable data types now maybe i just create a very large string so vl string these are all my naming 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 convention which i'm using so it's all your choice what you want to use just defining some reusable types guys let's define some date data types for dates as well date and time so type small date and a small date let's say it's of type local date control space also always helps you yeah so you can use the primitive data types available in cds along with sap hana data types let's put something called phone number phone number as telephone and then it's maybe let's say a string of type 30 control space always works now remember just to also tell the people youtube viewers we are using sap hana express edition which is a locally installed sap hana db i have already covered how to set up hana express edition in your local computer what are all this the requirement to be able to create hana express edition in your local computer it is installed on a virtual machine running on sushi linux and it's right right now on sp hana hana 2.0 sp2 so that's what hana express edition lightweight hana server running for designed for one single developer usage in a local computer however i showed also in the previous class how to get an access of free hana instance from hana cloud platform account and able to access this from your local system clear everyone let's go ahead now so that's about phone number let's create a type for currency so again type currency type and i'm just creating this currency type of type string of five so likewise i will just quickly define some reusable data data types for my consumption so i will also say type and i'll choose abap language a language feed i would need it at many places so then i can just define it as abap language of one in abap the language field is typically treated with one character How, however we have iso iso language code Type. it's of type 2 ISO language code and oops, oops I missed type statement yes that's what it is and with semicolon very important let's create amount quantity unit fields so let's put type amount type and amount type is let's say decimal 15 up to two decimal points that's my amount type let's put another type for quantity and then i will put quantity type as decimal 13 of 3 this is again your choice based on type what you want to define and entire data database table fields will be created with the reuse of these types guys so that tomorrow if there is something changes we have to just come and change this type and everywhere in all database tables it gets adapted quite easily and that's all being done naturally by sap hana you don't have to write any sql all the SQL code is generated behind the scenes. Let's put type, unit type. So let's put a unit type of string three. Similarly, we have to also put currency type because currency codes in above we have concept of reference fields where, where we put currency types and unit types. So let's put currency type, currency type. Again, a string of three we are using. Now, next one we will put, let's say some status. If I just want a flag, for some status status type string of one and finally we will put an above date type of string eight because above date is typically y y y y m n t d two time currency type we put where did we put again let me just control c and control f Yes, we had put it already on the top. Let me just bring it down. Just only one place. So let's group them together so that we can we can manage it better. Now let me also put a type for gender. So I just put type for gender. 
and I put a string of one for male female and yeah looks like I have a couple of reusable types like just like you start in above you start first data element and domains that's what exactly we did here we have created like data element and domains to be able to reuse them at multiple places these are all sing simple data types how do you write commented code in uh, CDS double slash and say these are all equivalent to my SAP ABAP domain which are reusable simple types clear everybody how to create simple type in CDS data types and now using these data types you can create database fields let's create some complex types now what is a complex type equivalent in ABAP anybody what is a complex type equivalent in ABAP what is it equivalent a structure okay so let's put a structure put type and I want to put let's say structure validity type curly braces and now inside you can say something I want to define a validity a typical validity happens with start date and end date and now you see I can use my data type which I've defined here s date and you see this s date here as a local date I've defined a reusable data type tomorrow some somebody come and say I want long date I just have to come at this place and everywhere it gets adopted automatically in my types and date that's my data type structure data type it's a structure this is structure can now be included where where will you include a structure anybody absolutely right Charu can be included in table right clear everybody I'm relating it with ABAP so that you those who are ABAP developers can relate it to your work that's why I think it's very helpful to, to compare and learn and remember these features okay that's why I'm, I'm relating it to ABAP those who don't know ABAP don't worry you can you will see the usage of these things which we are defining later point of time that would give you a complete comprehensive idea let's create some more type yeah it's like a group of uh, fields which you are defining them together and these group of fields if you want to create in table for example I have a table for employee where I have address fields so address includes uh, uh, street city postal code country um, landmark yeah five fields now if you want to define home address or office address or permanent address then you have, you don't have to add this group of five fields again and again you can group them together in a structure and just add the structure to the table and that's that that's the way you can reuse it and tomorrow if something new comes up in an address for example Aadhaar number or some UUID then you can add that, that in the structure and wherever this is structure is included for address the all places it gets adopted automatically clear everybody that's what exactly happens in ABAP we also have flag type all that you can create using type concept here naturally moving next let's create also name type so if somebody has a name again you see that whenever you define name you, you put first name middle name last name initials of the person name so all that is name type so I'm defining again a complex type for this a name type so anywhere whenever I need a name for somebody then I can use this so I say first name and I use a string small string last name I would say first middle And then I say last name and then we have initials of the name I want a string of 10 so you can also use here directly uh, your primitive data type like this not necessary always you have to specify your your own types it's your choice you can also use this completely okay with that good practices use data elements and domain in ABAP similarly here use your own data types clear everybody no need to put semicolon at the end of type curly braces itself indicates an end for the data type clear this itself indicates an end however it's a good practice to put an put an end of semicolon okay I think you have to put it <laughs> I missed it you have to put it every statement must end remember the funda fox every statement must end with semicolon you see every line in CDS must end with semicolon so we have to put it actually I forgot it now next let's create our first database table order status 
okay so i want to create a table table is referred as entity this is what we learn in dbms concept in college days a, a table is referred as entity in database and that's what sap has brought in into back to the old world where we call table as an entity so when you want to define a table use entity keyword and now we come back our order status table and just order status and just put curly braces end with semicolon inside this now we will write our columns of the table so let's put the key field the primary key of the table as a status and now i'll say here care one okay care one a character one maybe i can also use a string which i've defined for of character one type i think it is status type t status t that's my care one and now i can specify text for my status and i say it's a medium string m string data type which i use so that's the definition of a table how many types of tables we have in sap hana database anybody what are all the two types of store sap hana offers in terms of table how many types of tables we do have it in sap hana anybody what are all the two types of store perfect answer shaker it's a column store and row store how do you now specify here what type of table it is is it a row store table or a column store table what do you think in cds what makes it possible to define properties just now i told you schema was defined earlier in old syntax using a json format here we use annotation and of course you're right your direction is going right yes we use annotations to define the type so you can do at the rate of control space and you see annotation so you see catalog table type is column okay this would indicate the database the annotation is like an indicator it's an indicator to database that the below entity below table is of type column store you can also do control space and you see global temporary table a row table or a column table what type of table i want i want a column store okay yeah that's a column store table very nice till here we are done very simple data types we have created we have not reused yet the data types i will show you that next but right now you see your order status table should have been created after i activate will the table get created on save anybody when i save the file will the table get created anybody whatever we learned in previous chapters of hana repository what makes it table created yes activation makes it possible to create the table okay perfect if you don't if you don't specify the default probably it will give you a warning let me try so if i remove this okay and save this and try and do an a check over here on my uh, on my object let me do a check over here let's see if it gives me some warning regarding the, the specification i think it will not give any warning it would default treat it as a column table it didn't give me any warning or error the check is successful so it's a good practice that you use annotations which makes it clear okay which makes it clear so use this as column data type column type of table now let's save this and activate so maybe we will go back and try and check if there is a table order status you see there's no table called order status yet i come back and activate my hdbdd artifact let me right click and say team activate and you would see now in the second it got activated guys i go back and come here refresh and voila can you see the database table persist in my schema bip what is the prefix now behind the table name anybody what is the prefix what is this bip prefix what it indicates anybody what is this prefix behind the table name indicates no it's not schema guys it's package you missed it actually it's package package becomes the path actually however our schema name and package name are both same remember but it's the package which makes the path and now what is the importance of context do you remember do you remember we had something called a context can you see what was the context name which we have given anybody what was the name of the context we have given to our cds it was reuse and you see that also becomes part of your namespace over here and then finally your table name so this is how your table name is constructed the package path prefixed with double columns 
and then the context of CDS and the table name. Clear everybody how the name of the table is decided by system when you create it using CDS. Hope it's clear to everybody. The CDS syntax creating our first table. Do you see some data in this table? Do you think there will be some data in the table? Of course, there will not be because we just created it. We didn't insert anything yet. So let's execute. And now execute, there's no data in the table. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so we have created our first table and we have also been able to activate and see the table in the system. And behind the scenes, the necessary create table statement was created. Perfect. Very good. Very nice. Avinash, very good. Avinash has posted me the path, how the table name will look like. Perfect, Avinash. Let me put it in PPT. It will be very helpful. So when we create table, table using CDS. I like this Avinash. Thank you so much. When we create table using CDS, the path, the name of the table will be, and let me put the name, the, what Avinash has posted. I love it. Thank you so much Avinash. You're so nice. So I had put it here now. You see it's the package, double colon, the context dot table name. Perfect. So now if I open a table for you, and if I show you a table in standard SAP is delivered schema, will you be able to find out where that table exists? And will you be able to uh, tell the CDS name where in which the table exists? Of course, yes, you can. Let's go back and check that up. So SAP delivers me uh, some standard schemas, you see. And I can see there are a couple of standard schemas delivered by SAP over here. There is one schema which, which I right now don't have an access. So let me give an access with my system user. Remember, guys, this is something which we covered in last class. Authorization concept in HANA. It was all taught in the last class. So maybe I'll just give a permission to a schema available in SAP, a standard schema to my user Anubhav. So I come and give an authorization to uh, Sys EPM data and Sys EPM schema, which is delivered by SAP. And just say, OK. And I just allow select permission on these two schemas. So give this here and give this here as well. And I save this. And oops, several issues have occurred. Do you not authorize to perform required action? OK, I think we cannot give authorization to these two schemas to my user. Uh, yeah, I cannot give actually. There's some problem. OK, that's fine then. So if you at least see some table, let me see if in BI, BIC if I can show you some tables. Sys big schema, no, there's nothing actually. Maybe Sys BI. Yes, we do have, but there is nothing with this which is following this naming convention, OK? There's nothing which is having this naming convention. However, let me just go to the Shine content, which is standard SAP delivered content. Go to data. And you can see there will be some HDB schema. Let me see HDB schema, what they've created. SAP HANA EPM demo. There is a schema which exists in SAP system. I can give rights to my user Anubhav. <clears throat> For SAP HANA, SAP HANA demo schema. Let me give a right to SAP HANA demo schema to my user Anubhav. Did I open the wrong place? No, it's correct only. SAP. HANA demo. It's not showing me the schema. There's some problem. Maybe what I'll do is I'll try and execute the SQL command to give authorization, select authorization to the schema. So yesterday in the notepad, we have prepared this grant privilege, how to grant privilege for a schema to a user. So I say this is schema SAP HANA demo to my user Anubhav. Let me execute. Invalid schema, why? SAP HANA demo, HDB schema. I think this schema right now, I'm not sure why it's not showing me. So there is some problem. Why am I not able to see? But you can see here, they have also created the HDB DDRT facts and corresponding tables are generated in the system. So I, I need to investigate, guys, in my local HANA Express edition. Why is it like this? Okay, sorry, guys. This schema, this object is not delivered in local HANA Express. This was HCP1. Remember, in the last to last session, I showed you how to access Shine content from HCP, which is delivered in HCP uh, for practice per scenarios. So this is HCP project, not the local project. 
So that schema right now doesn't exist in my local system, my local HANA Express edition. So I'm, I'm looking at the wrong server, wrong project. So that, that this schema doesn't exist in my current system actually. So that's fine. So, but at least you know the naming convention which, which, which it creates the table in the system. And now, tomorrow if I want to change the structure, do I need to write alter table statement? Anybody? If I want to change the table structure, do I need to write alter table statement myself? And if I introduce data in the table, do I need to take a backup of the data myself if I change something? Answer is no, because that's what is being taken care by CDS automatically for me. Let's insert some records in the table now. So I'm going to insert some records. Now one easy way to generate insert statement, I'll tell, tell, tell you one trick. Go back to your HANA system, go to your schema. Uh, BIP schema right click on the table say generate generate an insert statement okay generate an insert statement and you see the insert statement has been created now we can go ahead and insert data in the table so like I showed you last time the data payload which I have got it from the CEO of the company they already give me some sample and now you see new status in process closed and cancelled these are all different order statuses we have it let me copy this sql come back here paste it and i'll just change my schema from hana access to bip and then my package path i will change it this with this value and now we are ready with the insert statement to insert the data inside order status table. Let me execute it. Congratulations. The data got inserted inside your table. And now you can go ahead and look at the data. You can also right click and say open content. And you can see four records have been inserted inside of your database table order status. Clear everybody? What did we do? How did we insert a data in our first table created using HANA CDS. Let's create similar to this multiple tables. So first one was order status and I'm just going to go back and add more tables similar to the order status. We're going to add an item status table. So I'll add an item status table. So I'm just cutting and pasting this, copy and pasting this again and again. And next table is my item status table. So first is order status, next is item status. Okay, once again, looks same item status table with the key as a status and a medium string. And the next one we have is billing status. And the next one we have delivery status. And the final one is payment status. Payment not status, payment method. So these are all the five tables I want to create. Now, when you activate, what happens? When you activate this, what happens? System already have the order status table inside this exist. So the order status table system compares, system go and checks if the order status table already exists. Is there any change in the structure? If there is a change in the structure, modify the table. Since there is no change, it won't do anything at all with order status table. Nothing will happen. Rest all the tables, system checks. It doesn't exist in the remote repository in SAP HANA. System would fire the necessary create table statement to create these database tables inside of SAP HANA remote repository. Clear everybody in the catalog. The catalog objects would be created for all these below tables. Let's go ahead and now see this. I save it. Right click or you can just do an activate from top. The activation goes on, gets completed. Let's come back, right click, refresh. You would see data in five tables got created. This won't disrupt the data of your existing table. If you look at your existing table, you still see the test data will be available in order status. Nothing goes away. System safeguard your data. That's the beauty of HANA repository objects. You don't need to worry about your data. If you change the table, modify it, if system, it's a non-disruptive change system, won't destroy your data, it keeps it. It's, it really works like data dictionary concept in ABAP. Just the way 
you change something in table in development release it to quality all is being taken care by data dictionary not by you so never write select queries or select statements to create delete update tables basically in terms of the table structure i'm saying so you are safeguarded with the changes now it's time to insert records in the table so that's my payload i've got it from the ceo of the company best in pizza and now what i can do is come back here and change this once again to reuse okay some problem there's some problem yeah so i have now replaced the the table names according to our new naming convention and of course my schema name is also different so it's bip replace and now you're ready let's go ahead and shoot these statements to create data in our status tables executed finished in microseconds and let's come back and now fire select query to read the table data from different tables so i will just come and maybe check item status table content Voila, it's created. Maybe delivery status. Yes, delivered, not delivered. Payment method. You can also open the, the table itself. You can also right click and say open data preview. And you see your dates data is available. Clear everybody? How you create your first simple table using HDBDD. And you don't have to now create multiple files. That's the beauty of HANA CDS. With HDB table, you got to end up creating multiple files. Here is a single file which is managing everything. Okay. Now let's create also some more type. Let's say history type. So I'll come here and create a history type. So I say type and I say history type. And in this, I'm going to put a couple of fields related to created by and changed by. So I say created by and i can put here the created by as date so i say s date and then i can say created on actually created by is a user actually so here we will put s date and changed by and we put a string of 10 and then i'll just come and here i'll put a string of 10 and then i'll put here created on or changed on as date so that's a that's a structure for who is storing the history guys created by created on changed by and changed on i've added now guys do you think that anybody in the company can create a pizza order anyone do you think in a company anybody unauthorized can create a pizza order can you go to dominoes and create your uh, create a pizza order in their computer yourself is it possible on the store when you walk in is it possible that you take on the charge of the computer and create it no it's only created by employee of dominoes so it doesn't make sense to just put a random value here rather it makes more sense to do a check that created by and changed by will be will be what anybody what it will be will it be some random value anytime or what it will be what makes more sense for you to check the created by and changed by should belong to what it should belong to employee guys <clears throat> it must belong to employee and this is something which hdbdd cannot hdb uh, cds concept or hdbdd can do it very very well you can now associate these values with employee table so let's create an employee table and associate these values with employee table so i'm going to define now my employee table entity and before that let's put the table type okay so catalog dot table type and i say hash column and now i put my entity 
employee. It's a table, employee table in my company for set of employees which are there. So I'm creating employees table, database table, and let's put some properties in this for employee table. The key for this is employee ID. And it's of type GUID. And now I'll put name of the employee. And this is what I will refer to the name type, you see, name type. And I'll put gender and then put it for gender type. Then I will put here the language. So I will put ABAP language. Then I'll put phone number. Typically, it's a good practice to put every column name in capital letter. Okay. Put every column name in capital letter. Phone type. And I'll say this could be kept as null. Sometimes employee may not have a landline. So let's keep it null. It's completely fine. Email address. Okay. Email address of employee. Of put it large string type. Then we put login time login name what is the login name of employee it's employee id let's put it as a string of 12 and then we will put validity of this employee and i will again refer a validity type which i created for validity this employee id is valid since how many days until what date then put currency currency type and then put salary amount how much salary I'm paying to this employee amount type in which currency am I paying salary to him clear everybody the employee table now watch out beauty of this we have used two reusable data types here the first one is your uh, your validity type you can see validity type somewhere on the top I've written it already and then this name type I've reused. So watch out now when the table gets created. Watch out carefully when the table gets created. How many fields the name type has? Anybody? How many fields the name type has? Anyone? How many fields the name type has? It has four fields. So when the table is getting created, what system will do? It will pick this. It will go to the type and it will create four columns for name type four columns guys system will create a starting name dot okay name dot one by one each column it will create inside of this table everyone is that clear to everybody what we will be doing exactly what will be happening behind the scenes let me activate and show you how, how it behaves Similarly, you see validity type. We have created a start date, employee joining date, and employee end date of employment. So that's what is also a, a reusable type. I've used it. Clear everybody how we reuse the data types, structures. We have done an include structure. So this is equivalent to include structure in ABAP. Those who are ABAPer, you already know the include structure concept. It's absolutely same concept. Okay. Let's activate it now. I right click and I just say team activate and it gets activated guys. You can see it got activated. Let's go back to the system. Refresh here and see what happens. Now just wanted to show you here. You see the employee table has got created. Okay, and now if I look at the structure of employee table, open the definition of employee table, watch out. What do you see? What happened with respect to name? It would end up creating four columns because name was the column name dot. It was referring to a type which was having four columns inside. So name dot first column, name dot second column, name dot third column. This has become four columns for you. Similarly, the validity also you see system has created two additional columns starting with validity dot start date, validity dot end date. Is this clear to everybody what has happened when you do include structure inside of a HDB table? Is that clear everyone? Are you clear with this? Any doubt, please tell me. I will repeat. 
is that clear how include structure works in about in sap hana this is how you should do when it comes to real sap hana native development this is hana cds power guys come back and now i'll show you the power of association so when you create this structure called created by changed by okay you now have to refer this to only employee only okay so we will now create a little bit of association saying that created by has to be an employee so we just say association what is this association of type 2 employees that's it by default by default system will check a created by column of type employee id guid because that's the primary key it always by default check for primary key guys okay it checks that created by value has to belong to employee id of employees table it's primary key that's what association is telling the system is this clear everybody association here similarly changed by has to be also an employee association to employees okay let me activate it once again to be very sure that everything is goes well i'm activating it done and now let's come back and check our types which got created you can see all the types here i think here yes you see history type name type and validity type if you come to the history type and open its definition you see created by dot employee id created by changed by dot employee id so this is how it impacting the association also it's like you know now it will go and check for employee id into employee table and it won't allow you to put a value randomly and it gives you a nice f4 help a value help also because it has a warranty relationship kind of a relationship with another entity that's what cds does very well which you cannot use with hdb table association the most powerful concept in cds both in abap and hana one concept two flavor cds core data services in in sap abap and sap hana is this clear everybody what is cds charu i remember in my abap on hana training you were asking me can you show an example of hana cds not an example full fledged hana cds we saw it today okay i will also post this video on youtube for those who are struggling to find hana cds it will be it will be a boon for them to have a look at this video it will guide them at least give them a brief understanding of why we do what we do and how do we do line by line we don't do copy paste guys none of my training i do copy paste at all i am against doing copy paste until unless you understand concept after you understand concept do copy paste as much as you can to speed up your development till you understand don't do copy paste write every single line of code you see your table types got created your sorry your types got created it always comes under table type however it's wrong but it's still you can check all the types inside procedures in your schema in table types you see all the types and your tables inside table section of schema okay so we saw power of reuse reusing the types we saw the power of association and now it's time to import some data to our table so employee table i'm going to import some data i'm not going to write and create a record in employee table manually instead i'm going to import the data now watch out carefully the data volume which my my biz best in pizza company ceo has given me he has given me an employee table i double click on this table and i see the data in the table look at the columns first column is employee id let me now compare these columns with the columns in our database table guys okay let me compare these columns in the data 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 uh, database table which we created so i come back here watch out here carefully you need to make sure the column names are matching to import the data from excel okay you need to make sure that the, the column names are matching to import the data first column employee id maybe if i look at the structure here it will be more clear employee id first column employee id perfect what is the next column name dot first see name dot first name dot middle name dot middle name dot last name dot last name dot initials 
name dot initials gender you see gender language see language phone number okay see phone number okay phone number email id login name phone number email id login name validity dot start date when did the employee join the company or what is the validity of his user id valid start valid end start end currency code salary amount of the employee clear everybody it's all matching the column names in excel sheet are matching with the column names of database table you are compatible to import the data let me intentionally do a mistake to show you that it will not work if column names doesn't match i'm just changing employee id to employee id one in excel i save this and now i will show you how to import this data clear so let me show you importing data from excel sheet to sap hana okay i'm saving this employee csv in my local computer i saved it and now let me get that excel sheet here now again you go back to your project and now what you need to do is you need to import the data the one more mistake which which i did guys i should put my reuse hdb dd inside data folder this is why we created data folder to group our fields and files so let me drag and drop this inside of data folder okay i moved the file i also now have to change the path so i say bip dot data that becomes my new path i save this and let me reactivate my cds i'm reactivating i got reactivated i go back to systems i right click here and you would see the names will change according to the new path you see it has got bip dot data folder subfolder reuse billing status i can right click and say open content and you see my data is gone because system deleted those tables from the from the main package and recreated the table inside sub package hence your data is gone okay so that's one important thing don't move the packages uh, don't move the the dd files between the packages it would cost you loss of data okay so be little careful about that part however i still see my tables are existing here why i don't know but they they should have got deleted or i delete it didn't delete those tables however i see still those, those old tables but let me now move the data back to my tables with my sample sql i use sample sql and let me move the data to my tables with a new path so my schema name is bip and my package path is changing and the package path is now bip dot data dot reuse and now oops sorry dot data dot reuse and now let me execute it there is some problem while inserting the data could not find table of view why let me right click refresh what's my table name let me drag and drop one of the table bip data reuse yeah reuse have come twice guys that's the problem yes you're right reuse has come out twice so i just got to replace to reuse dot only once perfect i say i can save this sql and give it to you it's already there in the payload uploaded in the blog execute it data got inserted my two tables are ready let's go ahead and test it and i'm just gonna see the data in my tables which i've got created open data preview and you see my data in the table so that's one good activity which we did that we moved it to the right package very very important you got to move the file to the right package guys so that the path is properly formed and the table is already created so that's about my four cds with couple of database table now it's time to move the data with the excel sheet to the table so there are two things which you need to move data from excel sheet so first of all you need to have an excel remember this excel should be in csv file okay it should be dot csv file and then you should also have your hdb table sorry uh, your table must exist inside of system now there has to be a connector you need between these two right so since you need to define something which tells who connects this to this and that's what called hdb ti artifact in sap hana hana database table hdb table interface this will allow you to bring both the table and the table uh, table data 
together in a single file and when you activate this ti artifact hdb ti artifact system would automatically move the data in corresponding columns from excel sheet to your database table hdb ti artifact to move the data from an excel to the table very good for demo and poc purpose that's why i'm teaching this because we have all the data got from the ceo of the company which we want to now move it to our table so let's go ahead and try and do that so what i'll do is i'll come back here and all the data i'm going to keep it in a different folder guys so let me create a new folder called load folder okay load folder i'm creating inside our project you see it's created and now inside i'm going to move my excel files so all the excel files i'm moving i'm copying them and pasting them over here that's the beauty of eclipse i can copy and paste all the files let me first activate my excel files so right click and activate my excel files team activate all of them got activated without any error they are all csv file let me open now first employee file and you can see the column name is employee id 1 for my first column which won't match with the table column now and when i try to activate my hdb table interface it will give me an error because the the column names are not matching between the table and excel so data transport cannot be done however let's go ahead and now write an hdb ti to be able to move this data clear everyone let's go ahead and do that so i come to data create a new file and i say reuse.hdbti all the reuse data which i want reuse cds for which i am creating reuse hdbti it's a simple json file you can also create this directly from the wizard which generates the code snippet for you let me right click on the project say new file other and i will use table interface yes table import actually table import configuration guys this is the file type you create hdbti artifact say next and now i am going to go ahead and put down here the file name i'll say reuse and i want to use a basic template to generate this file and i say finish and you can see system has automatically created a nice little template for me now i can specify my source and the target source is an excel sheet and target is my database table so let's put the cds table name so i'm going to drag and drop the table name go to systems i want to move the data to my employee table so I remove the whole thing i'm just going to drag and drop my table from the uh, from the list so this is my employees table i drag and drop the table over here without schema name because already it's part of the schema without schema name guys okay don't put the schema name not required just put the package path double call in the context dot the table name that's an naming convention next is the file path so you all know the file path it's again in the package so the package path is same this is the package path but it's bip dot bip dot load package this is where we have it you see the bip main package and then you have load package and then you have a file called employee dot csv so it comes here clear everybody what is the source and what is the target is this clear everyone source and target where to where the data will be moving your data will be moving from excel to the table is this clear everyone now you have to also tell that your your table your sorry your excel sheet has a header the first line of the excel is a header and system should also make sure that header names are used that column name in the header should match must match with the column name in table for which we put an, another statement we put it as use header names equals to true this is what we put save this we are done let's activate anybody will it work or not work first of all let me move this also inside data folder that's important for me i'll move i'll group I'll, i'm actually structuring all my content properly in the system that's what is important activity you should all always do it so now everything related to uh, related to tables structures interfaces all is there in data folder all the data load is there in here all the test data is there in here okay now will it work if i activate anyone what do you think ideally should it work or not work 
it won't because the column name in my Excel is mismatching with the column name in table. Let's try and activate this. I activate it and you see I got an error. What is the error? Double click. Table import syntax error. Unknown variable name, user header names. I think this is first issue with my TI itself. So I think it's user, not user, use header names actually guys. The property name is use header names. Let me try and activate now. And you see an error come now. I double click and see object not found in repository database BIP load employee.csv. System is unable to find this object employee.csv i think the problem is again with the with respect to the the uh, the the path so i think it's the the package bip dot my project name bip poc yeah so let let's go and check this up here if we can see this here the file path so let me just check if i can see it no i can't see it here actually guys so i think the problem is with the path of the file the path of the file should be bip dot my my project name dot load folder i think that should be the path so bip dot bip poc probably that could be the issue let me give a try i save this and now try and activate again now again let's see object not found in repository database object bip poc employee csv not exist okay why it's saying that so let's see why it's saying employee CSV don't exist. Employee CSV does exist. Just now we have created is employee CSV. I drag and drop this. Let's see if it gets the path. Does it open the Excel sheet? I don't know. I really should come in the path of the, this. It's not bringing. Let me right click and see if I can get the path of this. Okay how do i get the path of this now let me just right click and see copy qualified name and try pasting this here so this is the full path guys this is the full path i cut it and let me put this path over here okay guys no double colon here i was putting double colon that's not required I'll show you once again the technique. See, I was putting double colon. What you do, right click here, and you see here an option. Just now I've used that option. Copy qualified name, guys. Use this option, copy qualified name. Come here and put the file path. Paste it, save it, we are done. Let's try and activate again. This HDBTI file, I'll activate again. And now you see an error column type mismatch does not match the target table some essential columns there is no data provided can you see employee id see guys employee id and the column name there is employee id one do you see the error it's unable to import the data now the both the files table and the file got connected and now it's tried it started moving the data but the moment it encounter the first column it, it sees the column names are mismatching between excel and the table Hence, it gives you an error. That's the beauty of HDB table uh, table import configuration file. And now what you can do is go back and change your Excel. And let's come here and change this and do a save, control S. And that's it, we are done. I also save it in my local. I adapt it to be very sure. Click on OK and hopefully it should now work let's try and execute it i think it won't work guys because i don't see it still it will work it didn't edit actually i have to re-upload the excel let me try yes it's, it's still not working guys i need to re-upload the excel so let me delete this employee or let me reactivate employee csv you see it's inactive i think it, it made the change now in the file if i double click you should see the column got changed to employee ID only, but it become inactive. So I need to first activate my table, uh, sorry, my uh, Excel file. Right click, team, activate it, 
and now rerun the HDBTI because you made some changes in local and those changes has to be synced with the server first and then only it should work. Let's come back and activate this. So let me first go to employee table and fire a select query to show you that it's all real. There is no faking here. So <laughs> let's check the content of employee table first. If there is any data in this freshly created table, execute. You see zero records. There is nothing right now in the table. Let me now activate my HDBTI. Got activated, guys, successfully. HDBTI file got activated. Let me come back and fire a select query one more time. Voila, guys, all the data got uploaded from my Excel sheet to my employee table. Perfect. This is what we wanted. See, guys, the beauty of HDB table import configuration file. Congratulations. You have successfully created your first HANA CDS, first table, which reuses structures. And then you are able to successfully import the tested data from an Excel, Excel file to your SAP HANA database table. It perfectly imported everything the way the data was there in, uh, in Excel. It got everything imported, guys. Very well done. Congratulations, first HANA CDS. Now, this is the date format. What you see here is actually uh, the display format for user. So if you just come back to your user Anubav, okay, just in SAP, we have format is specific to users, right? Similarly, there must be something in HANA also. You see valid from, there will be some formatting option, user parameters. There will be some parameter for date also, date format, I think. Time zone, email address, locale. I don't know. In ABAP, we have this date format, right? I need to explore further to find out where can we change the user preferences, the user date preferences. That's something which I need to find out, guys. So give me some time for that. I'll check that up. But it's according to the user format, user date format it is showing. However, in actual database table, the date got uploaded based on what data you have in your Excel sheet. In your Excel sheet, the way you have the data, same way it got uploaded. So this is the YYYYMMDD in which it got uploaded but the display format is according to user preference like in sap also we have su1 where you can go and set the date preference how you should want to see the date in what format that's how that's why it's displaying in this format that's something a user preference you can modify based on your need maybe i'll, I'll explore and come back to you with this how it, it, it can be changed in, a, in sap hana but are you clear creating your cds creating your excel file and uploading this, I do a lot of background work, guys, for classes. I prepared all this data manually myself. And it took me about two complete days to prepare this test data and make sure that my table structure also matches with the Excel file structure. It took me two days, guys, to prepare all the tested data for all of you to demonstrate this in the class. Clear, everyone? about this so now let's look at a quick concept about role what about role okay how can we create role i think it will take time to uh, talk about that role concept so what is an exercise let me give an exercise for all of you to try then not uh, complete the next part today itself so exercise for all of you guys design hdbdd file for other database tables and import the data loads from Excel sheets, CSVs, to database tables which you create of BIP model. So we have all our database tables. You all know, according to Excel sheet, you go, go, go ahead and define it, guys. As per the Excel sheets, you go ahead and define them, and then you load. Now, before we close, let's quickly discuss creating one more file, OK? Creating one more HDBDD file, and reuse this HDBDD in, in that file, OK? And let me create. Um, table for product and product text and then you can go ahead and use this exercise and enhance that file and create more three more tables in that which is 
your uh, business partner order and order items so three tables you got to create it rest two tables product and product text i am creating it for you let me do that so i come back here once again right click new other and use ddl source in hana and i'm just going to create now my master and transaction data for bip so i just name it as bip hdbdds artifact click on next you can also choose here guys different templates you can see there are different templates you can choose from using empty context using drive types okay you see drive types using um, unmanaged association we will talk about what is unmanaged association in the view level and entity level what are all those things we will discuss but right now let me create it with an empty context finish and this time you see once again schema name we will put it here so my schema name is again bip schema in which everything should be created and now let me show you reusing reuse of another cds into one cds which statement do you use to reuse anybody i taught you this some time back which statement do you use to reuse one cds in another anybody which statement do you use to do a reuse import statement not context statement import statement is what you use i explained it in the ppt you see i have listed down already sorry using statement using statement okay using statement we use so use using and now put the name space so it's same folder bip data double quote control space and you see there is a reuse thing that's it done it's like include program in abap report it's like include program in abap report you have an abap report you have an include program you just want to reuse include program data types inside abap report you just do an include that's it as simple as that it is equivalent to an include program include program okay that's it guys it's so simple and now we can just go ahead and reuse so let me create product table and i will also now create the product text table over here in the system so that we can go ahead and now later on import the data so let me just quickly do that so i'm going to come and create the product table i don't know the structure so you can also refer this csv file i go to the csv file i copy everything from product table and just do that i copy everything and i come down i think i should first create the business partner table guys because there is an association of product with business partner so let me open the csv of business partner and copy these columns and create my table business partner so i say entity business partner and then of course put annotation object annotation sorry table type annotation for catalog and put all the columns and define node key as the key key attribute put semicolon so all these reusable types we have already created in reuse cds and i'm going to reuse them over here yeah so watch out first one is node key what should be it of type anybody just now we saw creating a node key for our employee table what was it of type guid perfect answer charu thank you so much let's put the type here as guid colon and i'll say bip dot data colon colon reuse i think we just have to put context it's context reuse dot control space and voila you see all the types of reuse which i created you can do control and click on this it takes you directly to your reuse type guid control click it takes you to the reference where it is so the, it's context dot its type which was defined bp role bp role is a char one so i say reuse or can also put a string of two email address we already created a type in reuse already for email address let me just see mail address what was the type we created let's go back and check do we have something called email address no we did not create one okay so what did we keep for email address earlier for employee it was large string we keep so let's reuse last large string l string phone number 
I use reuse dot medium string. Fax number again reuse dot medium string. Web address let's use reuse dot large string. BP ID BP ID is uh, of let's say 10 characters. So typically this is your semantic key guys. This is your technical key and this is your semantic key business partner ID. It's your semantic key. Okay, so let's put a uh, put probably a, a type here in again in reuse value type may maybe we will put let's say type semantic key string of 10 save this come here reuse dot semantic key yeah and the company name reuse dot large string and legal from reuse or you can also use hana dot where care of let's say 10 done the first table now when i activate i don't need to take care of order of activation i can select both my reuse and vip together and activate them why because it's all being taken care by hana hana checks that i have a business partner to be activated and this business partner is depending on a semantic key type and this semantic key type is defined in reuse hdbdd so what hana does which file hana activates activates first anybody which file hana activates first anybody which file hana activates first for you anyone who will tell me which file hana activates first will it activate bip hdbdd or reuse of course reuse and that's all been taken care by hana for you not by you yourself clear Let's go ahead and now activate this and import the data in business partner. So I select both the files, right click on them and say team activate. You don't need to take care of order of activation. It's all been taken care by SAP HANA. Both got activated, voila, come back, right click, refresh. You see your table business partners got created perfect. You see this is your table ready to import the data guys. Go to your HDB table interface, just add this file now maybe I'll create a new table interface for that for all my master data specific to BIP HDBDD so I copy this reuse HDBTI paste it again that's the beauty of Eclipse and I say master trans HDBTI that's my master transaction data for import and now I'll just change the table name to business partners and change my Excel file name is business partners CSV save this we are done let's activate this hdbti and as a team activate and this is how you should now enhance this file okay there's a problem now there's a problem guys you see schema could not be resolved for public synonym check that target table exists okay there's a problem i think we are using wrong context what was the context in which business partner was created anybody what was the context in which business partner was created? What was the context in which business partner was created? What is the context in which business partner got created? Is the BIP con context. See what are you using? You are using this. Just change it to BIP. How simple it is. SAP guides me very well. When in my activation it fails itself. It tells me what went wrong. That's the beauty of the error handling. Activate it got activated congratulations guys you see a magic happening come back to sql console and let's hit the table business partner i can just drag and drop table name see the path is also built accordingly the new context execute voila all the business partner data got imported successfully inside your database table thank you so much you see all the pizza brands have come up which are all your suppliers of pizzas which will be a great achievement for you so just go ahead and complete the exercise create all the tables guys see where all you you can reuse now our data structures so my complete test data which i've designed considering these is structures like if you see sales order you would see this history was used over there in sales order so just go ahead and try creating your own tables in the bip start creating in bip guys all the tables now for your order table so here is where you should create your product table you create your product text table you create your order table 
we create our order item table these tables I expect all of you to create by next class as an exercise import the data in your own HANA systems and just send me the screenshot to verify and in next class however we will show see we will look at the solution of this exercise we will talk about then the security the role concept we will talk about access privilege file I will also talk about CDS views in SAP HANA guys CDS is not just DDL this is the DDL part of CDS we saw we will also talk about DQL data query language using CDS view concept in HANA we will also talk about CDS security in upcoming days and then we will see how to consume CDS views or CDS artifacts in a SQL uh, in, in, a, in a access JS file okay we will talk about server-side JavaScript we will talk about server-side OData services access OData we will talk about SQL scripting we'll talk about calculation views in SAP HANA there's a lot more action to come yet this is just the beginning if you like this YouTube video if you see some useful information is provided to you please like share comment on this YouTube video don't feel uh, don't uh, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for videos like this which I'm creating it for the community to help you guys to solve your problems and somehow make you understand things end to end without copy pasting the code if you want the access for the full course please subscribe the course on my website onlinefurytrainings.com you can always go to onlinefurytrainings.com and subscribe for my courses so it's already available I just quickly show you that so I go here and this is the website you can go you can always find my contact details uh, you can whatsapp me you can also add me on your on your whatsapp you can email me your doubts you can email me your complaints do let me know your feedback in the comment box on this YouTube channel on this YouTube video and I would hear and I'll try to complete as much as I can do it for you if there's a problem you're facing just do let me know I'll try and create a YouTube video for the same and share it with you thank you so much have a nice day and goodbye any question before we close today's class anybody HANA CDS for HANA access advance yes exactly this is HANA CDS for HANA access advance okay CDS concept remains same it doesn't change for advanced guys in advance we get some more advanced concepts like I was telling HANA uh, HDI HANA uh, multi data container you get it HDI you get it microservice architecture SAP web IDE based tools you will get it everything gets divided into small small microservices and modules so that's advanced part node.js programming we will talk about it let me uh, let me continue and, and take you to that level at that point of time you get a full idea okay so Surya Khan my server was not running yesterday that's why I did not call you no problem just do let me know once you are free uh, just do uh, post a whatsapp we'll see if the time convenient we will sit together and look into the issue what you're facing with that it's a wrap thank you so much see you the next weekend have a nice day goodbye